Hello everyone and welcome to my own sheet. My name is Jess and this is my very first YouTube video. Yay! Since we're approaching the end of this year and with it the next 2022, I wanted to start a new bullet journal for obvious reasons. I simply need a calendar and a tracker for the next year. And I decided to take you with me on this journey. I'm very excited to start my fourth bullet journal with the upcoming year. I'm usually not too artsy with it, but I'm a sucker for aesthetic, so I do hope you like my future creations. You're welcome to subscribe if you're interested. Today's video will be a review of one of the Tittle and Jot journals. But first, bullet journals. For those who are new to the matter, are basically self-written and self-designed calendars which you customize to your own needs and liking. There is an approximate outline that you usually use for journaling, a future log, a monthly log, and a weekly or daily log. Many also add trackers and fancy doodles since it just looks amazing, though it's not quite the point of this system. It's supposed to keep you focused, productive and on track with everyday life. It helps you plan for the future, lets you focus on your goals and keeps you in line with your values through regular reflections. But I think the creator of the system, Brida Carroll, who also wrote the book The Bullet Journal Method, can explain it way better than I can. So I'll just put a link of his introduction video into the description. But honestly, it's not very difficult and everyone can start if interested. So try it yourself if you'd like. No need to go fancy, just keep it simple. And today I am presenting you just one of thousands and thousands of notebooks you could use. Every kind of notebook is usable for bullet journaling. A ruled, a blank or a bulleted notebook, A4, B5, A6, use whatever you like and what suits your needs. I just like to help you get started if you're a picky journaler like me. So let's get started unpacking this thing. I've been waiting for this package for what felt like ages. I'm so excited to open it up. This little package is held together with an additional cord with this cute sign attached to it. On the back's also my name. Whoever wrote this, you have beautiful handwriting. Thank you so much. So, when you open it up, This is what you get. The wrapping says, thank you for your support from our hearts. We hope our product brings you joy and creative inspiration. Hell yeah, you bet. Share your creations with us on Instagram at titleandjot.co. Lots of love, Tittle and Jot. Once I removed the wrapping, I came to find this really cute stickers, mostly designed like vintage paper strips with either text or music sheets on it, and some are just blank paper. The other one has complete pages, a few fake wax, wax, <laughs> wax, <laughs> a few fake wax seals, and a train ticket from platform nine and three quarters on it. I already have an approximate idea where I might use these stickers. Now. Here we are. This is it. The Tittle and Jot 
bullet journal in beige, size A5 hardcover. There are other cover designs as well. All are very pretty and made of organic linen. I decided for the white one because I thought it matched the academia vibe I wanted to go for best. The journal costed approximately uh, 27 euro and 50 cents or 31 uh, dollar and 40 cents including shipping to Europe. It took about four weeks but only that long since it landed in the customs office and laid there for almost two weeks until they finally decided to process my parcel. So it's not the fault of Tittle and Jot, they were very quick. I think they shipped it after a week or something. And I also had to pay additional customs duty of approximately 10 euros. So mind you if you're living in Germany or generally Europe. To me, the whole experience costed about 38 euros now. But now it's here and I'm very happy about that. Now let's have a look on the inside. There is no pre-made index or key pages, but there is one beautiful page for your personal information. After that, it goes straight into the dot grid pages. In between the pages, I was surprised to find these little cards of encouragement. A really cute idea. It contains 192 pages of typical dot grid paper, which are 1.5 centimeters apart. The paper is pretty wide compared to, for example, a Leuchtturm journal. Unfortunately, I don't have one at hand to show. The dots are very small and dark grey. I think they're very inconspicuous. I prefer the small ones anyway, so to me these are just right. The pages are unnumbered and the dots go up until the edge. It has a bookmark and no back pocket at the end. An elastic closure and no pen loop. It does lay quite flat. As you can see here, the stitching isn't always perfect, but it's okay on most pages. And at last, the pen test! Dramatic music, please! Okay, no, I'm too lazy to edit that in. I'm sorry. For the pen test, I am going to use the Pigma Micron pens, the Rotring Isographs, this Paper Poetry stamp pad. Stabilo text markers in pastel colors. And these Crelando brush pens I got from Lidl. They aren't the best quality, so I'd only recommend them if you really just want to test some and practice. Then I'll be testing this drawing ink by Pelican. And at last, I'm gonna use some watercolor on it. Those are the Pelican watercolors that I already used in elementary school, as you might have guessed by the look of it. Pen tests are done on the last page. I've never seen anyone do it somewhere else, to be honest. I already marked the page with some washi tape for decorative purposes, I guess. 
just so it can make the rest of the page really ugly. <laughs> The paper is 120 GSM. I usually test how much you can see a simple line, how it smears, and how the paper holds up against lots of ink. As you can see, the micron pens held up against the paper very well. They didn't bleed through and there's only much ghosting visible if you use lots of ink in a small area. The same goes for the road ring isographs. These Stabilo text markers are naturally light in color, so there's obviously not much ghosting but it seems to easily bleed through the paper if you go over the same area twice or if you stay in one spot for too long. The Krillander brush pens, as mentioned, aren't the best quality and you can clearly see them through the paper. And at one point they bled through just a little. But I guess I'm still gonna use them. Then the pelican ink. I used my writing feather for it and it did bleed through quite a lot. There is visible ghosting and the paper is also feathering quite a bit. So I'm sorry if you use ink, but this might not be the right journal for you. The watercolors didn't bleed through and the paper only gets a little bit wavy if you lose lots of water. So. If you plan anything big, I would suggest to use normal watercolor paper and a little bit of glue if you want to make proper drawings. Otherwise, you should be fine. And at last, the paper poetry stamp. Unfortunately, bled through heavily. Guess I need to think of a solution for that somehow. Overall, I absolutely adore the design of the notebook. That was one of the most important reasons I bought it. The paper is very smooth and bright white with slim dots. It has one bookmark and no back pocket, which I wouldn't use often anyway, but it occasionally still comes in handy. I might improvise on that though. When using my usual pens, the micron pens and the road ring isograph, there is very little ghosting visible, which is extremely important to me. A little bit sad is that it's only A5 and not B5, since my last layout heavily depended on that. Guess I need to restructure my layout then. It also bothers me a bit that it has just 192 pages, which is, compared to my last journal, way smaller. I'm used to having lots of pages for lists and additional notes and reviews. But I calculated that this will probably be enough for the whole year. I don't want to split my bujo in the middle of the year. Then there are minor things like the stitching that isn't always perfect, that there is no pen loop, and that it only has one bookmark, but that would bring the whining to another level. There is one more thing though that bothers me, also a small detail, but an important detail. The grid has no margin, so it goes up until almost the edge of the book, which bothers me a bit. But I love that there are pretty much no pre-made pages, except for the contact thingy, which I would have done anyway, just in case. But all these things are up to personal preference. I just wanted to introduce you to the journal, show you around a little, and see how well it stands against the different kinds of inks, etc. So I hope this video helped you in your decision, even just a little bit. I am really excited to use this beautiful journal for the following year. I hope you liked this video. If so, please like, subscribe and share with other Bujo junkies for more bullet journal and productivity content in the future. 
If you're interested, you're also welcome to check out my Instagram. I'll link it in the description for you. Thank you very much and hopefully see you next time.